Hello, welcome to Vedial Vagaparai. In this video, we are going to see an IIT JEE advanced question of 2023, that is this year's IIT JEE advanced question. Through this uh, question, we are going to learn 12 organic reactions. So, let us see the question first. The question has four different sets of equations that are given and then the end products are denoted by P, Q, R and S and then the choices are given. I have marked in red the correct option but then when you see the, the choices given here, we see each of these reactions is an individual reaction and they are different reactions. So, we are going to see what they are and what is their significance and how we arrive at the each of these products and then how do we conclude the correct option. This is what we are going to see through this particular video. So, I have said 12. So, the first reaction is this, then it will be the second reaction, then we have uh, again in the second set we have around 3 reactions, the third set another 3 reactions and the fourth set has 4 reactions. And then we have cold electrolysis, Canizero reaction being spelt out here. So, together we will be seeing 12 different reactions in this particular video. So, first and foremost, this is the first option we saw. That is option for P, the formation of P. So, the first reaction sequence uses magnesium and dry ether. And the second is using water. So, when you say alkyl halide reacts with magnesium in dry ether, it is actually preparation of Rignard reagent. So, all alkyl halide reacts with magnesium to form Rignard reagent. So, this is a very popular reagent which we all know is used to make different kind of products. So, this is a very good starting material for making different kinds of products. So, based on the kind of R group you wanted to use for further reaction, we can choose the alkyl halide. So, from the respective alkyl halide, we can prepare the Rignard reagent and then subject it further to other reaction conditions. So, now when there are some basic things that we must know about this Rignard reagent. When we are converting an alkyl halide to a Rignard reagent, we see the carbon which is an electrophilic carbon when it was an alkyl halide becomes a nucleophilic carbon when it becomes a Rignard reagent. So, carbon acts as a nucleophile in a Rignard reagent whereas, whereas it is an electrophile in a alkyl halide. This is an important thing which is a useful parameter for this reagent to be used as a starting material for different kinds of reagents. Another thing to note about Rignard reagent is the use of solvent. In this particular reaction dry ether or tetrahydrofuran are popularly used as solvents. The reason is we should not use water or alcohol because water and alcohol are protic solvents and uh, they will form a different kind of product with Rignard reagent. We will see it later. But for now what we must remember is dry ether is a good solvent and it is an aprotic solvent which is a preferred solvent for the formation of Rignard reagent. So, now let us see what happens when water is added to Rignard reagent. So, why is water not used as a solvent is a you will get to know from this particular equation. So, Rignard reagents react rapidly with acidic hydrogen atoms. So, alcohols and water have acidic protons and so the Rignard reagent will very quickly react with water and form alkane. So, from alkyl halide if you want to form an alkane you will have to just convert it to Rignard reagent and treat it with water. You will get the respective alkane. So, now coming to our starting material. So, this is the starting material. Magnesium is added and then Rignard reagent is formed. So, to this Rignard reagent when water is added, the magnesium chloride is substituted with hydrogen atom or water breaks and then this Rignard reagent becomes a alkane. So, an alkane is formed as the product of this particular reaction. So, P is an alkane. This is something which we must remember. Another thing is it is not only water, we also said alcohols, phenols, carboxylic acids, any acidic proton will undergo a similar kind of reaction as that of water. This is something which we must remember. Now, going over to the next set of reactions. 
So this is the second set. So in this second set, again we see the first equation is formation of Rignard reagent. The second equation is reaction of Rignard reagent with carbon dioxide and then uh, you know protonation and then sodium hydroxide reaction. So now we will see each reaction one at a time. So we know Rignard reagent is uh, made from alkyl halide. So we know from this alkyl halide magnesium is added and we get the respective Rignard reagent. But the second reaction is a unique reaction which you must see here. So here carbon dioxide when it is treated with Rignard reagent and you have the you know acid workup as a second step as we have mentioned here it results in the formation of carboxylic acid. So what you must remember here is Rignard reagent when it is treated with carbon dioxide it forms carboxylic acid. So now in our starting material again we get the Rignard reagent. This Rignard reagent with carbon dioxide will result in the formation of carboxylic acid that is the second and the third followed by hydrolysis. And of course when carboxylic acids are treated with sodium hydroxide we will get the sodium salt of carboxylic acid. So this is the product that is formed that is Q is the sodium salt of this carboxylic acid. So this is reaction number 3 and uh, reaction with acid and the sodium hydroxide is reaction number 4. Now coming to the next set that is formation of R. Again the first reaction is formation of Rignard reagent. The second step is reaction of Rignard reagent with acetaldehyde followed by hydrolysis like how we did for carbon dioxide followed by H2O here also acetaldehyde. So this is a very popular reaction of Rignard reagent which you all would have studied uh, under alcohols. So now let us see what happens when Rignard reagent is treated with acetaldehyde. So this is the Rignard reagent that we have got and when treated with acetaldehyde we all know it undergoes a nucleophilic addition reaction to form a secondary alcohol. So if it was formaldehyde you would have got primary alcohol, acetaldehyde will form secondary alcohol and acetone would have formed a tertiary alcohol. This is something which we would have studied under preparation of alcohol from Rignard reagent and aldehydes or ketones or carbonyl compounds. So here in this case acetaldehyde and Rignard reagent react and we get the secondary alcohol. So this secondary alcohol is again oxidized. So CrO3 is a popular oxidizing agent which will oxidize secondary alcohols to ketones. So the next reaction is secondary alcohol oxidation to ketone using CrO3. So the, these are the sets, two sets of reactions that we see in this. So R is actually a ketone that we have got. So first aldehyde reacts to form a secondary alcohol, then on oxidation will form ketone. So this is the uh, next set of reaction. Now coming to the final set of reactions. Uh, wherein we are not having Rignard reagent as a starting material. We are having an entirely different sets of reaction of alkyl halide. So that is the seventh reaction which is reaction of alkyl halide with ethanolic NaCN. Again ethanolic NaCN uh, you would have studied that alkyl halides will form nitrous uh, cyanide. So when, when you are making use of AgCN, the isocyanate would have been formed. But here because it is NaCN or KCN, we know cyanide is the product that is obtained. So Cl is replaced by Cn to form this particular product. And this product on reduction, this is again a popular reaction. So reduction of Cn group results in the formation of a primary amine. So Cn becomes CH2 NH2. So hydrogen is added to carbon and nitrogen to form. Here you have a CH2, here we have an NH2. So this becomes a primary amine. So a nitril becomes a primary amine. And now this particular reaction, what we are seeing here is uh, actually the reaction of this primary amine with chloroform in sodium hydroxide. This reaction is called as carbilamine reaction or it is also called as Hoffman's isocyanide test. 
So in a carbalamine reaction, the primary amine is converted into an isocyanide. See, CN is actually um, uh, carbon being bonded to carbon. NC is nitrogen being bonded to carbon. So this is isocyanide. So from cyanide, we form primary amine. From primary amine, we are forming isocyanide using carbalamine reaction, which is a very popular reaction. Uh, in our regular uh, classroom uh, practical sessions, um, a foul smelling gas of isocyanide is formed. And this is usually prevented uh, from being done in the classrooms so that uh, students are not exposed to isocyanide fumes or they have to do it under the fume code. The next set of reaction is again another reduction reaction. Here it is now lithium aluminium hydride. This is same like that of hydrogen and nickel catalyzed uh, reduction reaction. Here the starting material was CN, so we got a primary amine, that is CH2 and NH2 was added. Now here it is NC, so again here it is H and H being added to carbon atom and nitrogen atom. So we land up getting a secondary amine. So from a primary amine, we land up getting a secondary amine. And we see whenever we have a nitrile being formed, it results in a new carbon carbon bond formation. So that is the beauty of introducing CN in a chemical reaction. So in this particular uh, equation, S is actually a secondary amine. So now let's go back to the question. So in the question, we see I'm just listing out the products. So the first product was an alkane. The second product was a sodium salt of carboxylic acid. The third one is a ketone. Actually, it's a methyl ketone. The fourth one is a secondary amine. So now we coming to the options. As we have already noted, B is the correct option. But let us see what is A. A says P is a primary alcohol with four carbons. So actually, it's not an alcohol. It is an alkane. So option A is wrong. Then B, let's come back to B last. Now coming to S because both B and C have another reaction to them. So I will come to them next. Next go to S. S is a primary amine with six carbon atom. Whereas we know this S is actually a secondary amine and not a primary amine. So A and B are not the answers. And now let us see C. So when you see C, it says R has six carbon atom and it undergoes Canizero reaction. So six carbon atom is right. So there are six carbon atoms. But then for a molecule to undergo Canizero reaction, one of the important, see I have put the Canizero reaction here, an example of Canizero reaction here. So whenever a Canizero reaction happens, what is an important criteria? The criteria is there should not be any alpha hydrogen atom. That is the carbonyl group. The carbon next to the carbonyl group should not have any alpha hydrogen. So now you see here, this is the carbonyl carbon, but both the carbon atoms adjoining it have hydrogen atom in them. So because this particular molecule has alpha hydrogen atom, definitely it cannot undergo Canizero reaction. But then Canizero reaction is a reaction where sodium hydroxide attacks a substrate and then it is a disproportionation reaction where the aldehyde will be oxidized to acid and reduced to alcohol. So the, that is why this is called as a disproportionation reaction. Now coming to B. So we have got the sodium salt of the acid and we know coal electrolysis uh, is a reaction where the sodium salt of the acid, acid is electrolyzed and you get an alkane. So the same thing, let us look at this particular starting material. If we remove this carbon dioxide going out and so this is one half. So this half has four carbon atoms, one, two, three and four carbon atoms. So another dimer, that is the same entities, another half will be on the other side. So this kind of a dimer will form, that is RR bond will be formed. So we see here the product will have eight carbon atoms. And so the option B is the correct answer or Q is the correct answer.